When Capcom first announced the Mega Man Legacy Collection, I thought it was really stupid and I had no interest in it whatsoever because it only included Mega Man 1 through 6, which I already own, and it lacked 7 and 8, which even the previous Mega Man Anniversary Collection had. Not only that, the Anniversary Collection also included Mega Man The Power Battle and The Power Fighters, two games which were previously unavailable to own on console. Mega Man Anniversary Collection came out in 2004. Since then, we've had two more classic series games come out, so I can't understand how a new game, 12 years later, is now lacking not only Mega Man 7 and 8, but 9 and 10 as well. I really didn't see the point. Then I heard Capcom talking about how the games were rebuilt on a new engine, and then it at least kind of made a little sense to me. I still had no intention of buying the game, but hey, at least it made sense. They were offering challenge modes as well, so I thought maybe you'd just be able to get a really tight Mega Man experience in a collection pack. No shoddy emulation crap. Then I heard they were packing a gold Mega Man amiibo with a 3DS port. Now, I'm not an amiibo fanatic, and I pretty much only buy the ones that I'm really interested in, like the characters I play in Smash or just characters I really like. With that being said, I do, however, happen to be a Mega Man fanatic, and as stupid as a repainted version of an amiibo I already own is, I had to have it, because it's Mega Man. So I went out and bought it. It looks really nice on my shelf, and I, at the very least, now have an excuse to replay the NES Mega Man games again. I opened the box to find out that the cardboard backing didn't even have art on it. It was just blank. Not a big deal, sure, but kind of tacky in my opinion. For some reason, though, they still felt the need to put the magnetic strip that prevents you from scanning the amiibo in box, though. I found that kind of strange. Yacht Club had the right idea with the Shovel Knight amiibo. I mean, they could have just as easily put the magnetic strip in the big box instead of inside the plastic, but whatever. It wasn't until I completed Mega Man 1 that I started to get annoyed with the game. I finished Mega Man 1, and guess what happened? Nothing. The game reset, and I had to exit back to the main menu. That was it. No gold star, no check mark, no completion percentage, nothing. Just back to the title screen. This pissed me off because it started to make me wonder why I was even playing these games on a handheld in the first place. It would have been a better experience, and I would have yielded the exact same outcome if I had played it on my NES, or in this game's case, a fucking Retron 5, and I'll get to that in a second. Even Super Mario All-Stars, a compilation game that came out in 1993, had a fucking completion log. I don't even care if I'm getting any kind of completion bonus for anything, but at the very least, make me feel like I'm accomplishing something. I want to be able to beat the Legacy Collection, and for all intents and purposes, I can't. Now let me get to what really killed this game for me. So I go and boot up Mega Man 4, go to the level select screen, and what do I see? Overscan. There is fucking overscan. They put a nice pretty border on all the games, and there's this tacky ass overscan blemishing the left side of the screen. Like, how can you make what's supposed to be some polished homage to Mega Man's legacy and then let shit like this slide? At first, it just came off as lazy, but then I got to thinking. If this game was really what they said it was, the original Mega Man games rebuilt on a new engine, then why the fuck would there be shit like overscan left in? It didn't make sense, and it seemed really fishy to me. So I did some research. Turns out, this game really is just the Mega Man ROMs running on a fancy NES emulator, and this is why I absolutely refuse to support this shit. While I will admit the Legacy Collection is now the cheapest way to play all six original NES Mega Man games, it's absolutely absurd that they didn't include 7 and 8. And it's pretty sketchy that Capcom had originally touted this game as a true rebuild of the original games. I am completely unhappy with it, and I honestly have no reason to own it at this point. This video is really hard for me to make, because I also believe it's a double-edged sword. While I don't want to support this lazy slap together game. I also want it to sell well because I want Capcom to see that there is still very much a market and interest for Mega Man. I will say if you've never ever played the original Mega Man games before, you're the type of person that would benefit from buying this collection. And you know what? I believe that you should. The first six Mega Man games are amazing classics that in my opinion stand the test of time and still hold up today. If you've never experienced them, the $30 price tag is well worth it. And hell, the PC port is only $15. Totally worth it. If you, you know, ignore the fact that it's just emulation and emulators and ROMs are free. But as it stands, this is the cheapest price you've ever been able to purchase these games for, and I think it's worth it. But if you're a seasoned Mega Man player, the extra modes are not at all worth the price, at least for the 3DS. All in all, though, I am extremely disappointed in how they've sold Mega Man short on what's supposed to be a preservation of his legacy. You decide for yourself whether or not it's worth a purchase. As for me, I'm just gonna be over here enjoying my $50 amiibo.